So the other night, our oven caught fire, and I learned a very valuable lesson, and I want to share it with you in today's episode. So the other night, our oven caught fire, and I guess what happened is that something in there had spilled and made a big mess, and then my wife, being the amazing partner that she is, was cleaning it all up. And she had turned on the oven up to like 500 degrees and let it kind of sit for a little bit. And then I walked into the kitchen and I saw smoke just like billowing out of it. And I was like, "Uh, honey, is there supposed to be smoke coming out of the oven? And she was like, nope. So I opened the door to the oven and I saw obviously flames billowing inside the oven. And my wife just calmly walks into the kitchen, grabbed some baking soda from the cupboard, opened up the oven door, and then tossed the baking soda on the flames, and they went out almost instantly. The calmness that she displayed while she was dealing with those flames was super impressive and honestly pretty hot, both literally and figuratively. And here's a look into how my brain works. In life, we experience all sorts of crazy stuff. We get hit with surprises, with crises, with injustice and pain and loss and grief and struggle. And these are all metaphorical kitchen fires, if you will. So do these little emergencies, these difficult situations that pop up in your life, do they keep you from acting with compassion, with generosity, self-control, sanity, prudence, honesty, humility, straightforwardness, and kindness? I get it. Sometimes we freak out because we think we should. We hear about our neighbors freaking out. We see people on TV freak out all the time. We see leaders of our country freak out. And we assume that it's the only way to respond when we are confronted with something unpredictable or dangerous or threatening. The truth is, you get to decide how you are going to respond. Look, when something goes wrong in a surgery, a surgeon can't afford to flip out and lose their mind or lose control of their emotions. They have to stay composed. They have to lean on their experience. They've been training for years for moments like this, and they know that freaking out doesn't help anybody, so they stay calm and they do their best to deal with the issues as they arise. When something goes wrong on like a space shuttle, an astronaut has no time to panic. They are practiced in handling stress in all sorts of different scenarios, and they revert to the procedures and the routines that they've run through hundreds or thousands of times to get back on track and stay safe. When a professional athlete falls behind in an event, they know that panicking and beating themselves up and berating themselves isn't going to help. So they breathe deep, and then they stay focused, and they don't give up. They grind away until they accomplish the task that is at hand. Now, the same can be true in your life and in your marriage. When your partner is disrespectful or when you feel like you're not being appreciated or treated fairly, when you're feeling angry or tired or betrayed, you have a choice. Are you going to allow what happened to give you an excuse to be the very worst version of yourself? Or are you going to choose to be at your best even in the worst of circumstances? You get to write your own story. You get to choose your reactions. With practice, you can determine how you respond when you're under duress or pressure or when things aren't going your way. Pain, loss, and unfairness are never an excuse for being the worst version of yourself. Look, I am a firm believer that most couples don't need therapy to have a great marriage. But it's incredibly rare that you'll ever get the type of marriage that you're capable of without a little bit of guidance and encouragement. There's just too much working against you, whether it's the fact that you didn't grow up with good examples of marriage or the terrible stuff that we get exposed to from Hollywood and reality TV, or just the fact that you're two imperfect humans trying to create an amazing life together, even though nobody has ever taught you how to do that. Now, I'm a firm believer that working on your marriage shouldn't have to feel like work. And that's exactly why I created the Epic Marriage Club. Here's how it works. You get regular monthly workshops and trainings from the top marriage experts in the world. Then every single week, I transform those lessons into an actionable experiment that we'll do together because you only get results when you take action. And... You'll be doing these experiments with an amazing community of awesome couples that care as much about having a great marriage as you do. Plus, I'll do a monthly Q&A session to make sure that you never get stuck or hung up on anything. 
It's literally everything you need to have a truly epic marriage. And the best part, it's freaking fun. You get all that and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff that I haven't mentioned yet for the price of a movie ticket. So go sign up right now at epicmarriageclub.com.